One of the most useful features of the Zuiko, the Olympus Zuiko 12 to 100 Pro lens, is its ability to switch from autofocus to manual very quickly. Around the lens barrel, you have a focusing ring. If it is in the forward position, that is near the front element of the lens, then you are in the autofocus setting. Move the ring back and you now reveal the distance settings. Now you are in manual focusing and the autofocus is disconnected. A common problem with this system and many a photographer has been caught out by it, is that when you are on autofocus, it is quite easy to move the focusing ring. You might brush up against something, for example, and if the focusing ring moves back from autofocus, then when you try to autofocus next time, the camera won't. So, something to watch. And if you look at the super control panel at the back of the camera, it should give you the status of this ring as to whether you are in autofocus or manual. Whilst autofocus works perfectly well for many scenarios, there are times when focusing needs to be more precisely controlled particularly depth of field. That, of course, is the amount of sharpness from front to back of the image. Depth of field is controlled by aperture and lens focal length settings. A small aperture increases depth of field. A large aperture decreases it. A wide angle optic or setting on a zoom lens increases depth of field at any aperture setting. A telephoto decreases it at any aperture setting. These two factors control depth of field together. Whatever the camera focuses on, depth of field extends twice as much behind it than in front the amount controlled by aperture and lens settings. For example, if depth of field extends 10 feet behind the subject, the amount of depth of field in front is only 5 feet. This is known as the one-third, two-thirds rule and critical when taking close-ups as depth of field is reduced to just a few inches at any setting. Micro Four Thirds deliver more depth of field than larger formats, but not so much as compact cameras or smartphones. The physical size of a sensor dictates the focal length of the lens, and the smaller its number, the greater the depth of field. For example, the focal length of a standard lens on a full-frame camera is around 50 millimeters similar to a 35 millimeter film camera for micro four thirds the focal length of an equivalent lens having a similar angle of view is 25 millimeters therefore depth of field is more differential focusing by reducing depth of field with micro four thirds is possible but you need to understand how depth of field is controlled by apertures and lenses. Without a depth of field guide, calculating is done by guesswork based on experience. This is important for close-ups. By focusing about a third in and then setting the aperture at factor 8, the whole flower should be completely sharp. The background now out of focus. Factor 5.6 or 4 won't achieve complete sharpness of the flower because the depth of field has now been reduced and 
F11 or 16 will bring the background into focus, so it is a very fine balancing act. For landscapes with foreground interest that need to be sharp, bring focusing forward to around 50 feet, that is, a little to the left of the infinity mark, to benefit from the one-third, two-thirds rule. That should ensure the image is sharp from front to back, provided the aperture is at factor 8 or 11 with a standard or wide-angle optic. With Micro Four Thirds, it is amazing how depth of field with a wide-angle lens at f4 in low light is wide-ranging, something much more difficult, if not impossible, for a full-frame camera. I'm going to finish this program with a few words about spot metering. And for this demonstration, I'm going to use the entry level OMD camera. This is the EM10 Mark II. Now, when spot metering, if you want to alter the central position where it would normally meter from, you have a grid in the back of the camera on the screen here, which you can alter. But I prefer a different method, which I will now demonstrate. Now, for argument's sake, for the purposes of this demonstration, uh, I don't quite know why, but let's assume I want to take the reading from over there to take a picture of you. What I do is quite simple. Did we hear the ice cream, by the way? I've got the window open, so you get all the natural effects through this demonstration. Anyway, let's get on with the <laughs> demonstration. What I do, then, is to take a reading, okay, from over there, right, and I lock the exposure by half depressing the shutter button. And then I move the camera and take the picture, okay? Now, something to watch, two things. When you half depress the shutter button, then keep your finger on the button. Don't take a picture at this stage, but if you release the button, then you lose the setting from over there. Furthermore, when you move the camera, then you must have the focusing, the auto-focusing on S-AF, not C-AF. Otherwise, when you move the camera, right, when you move the camera, if it's on C-AF, the camera continues metering and focusing. So there you are. That's how I do spot metering, which I find very convenient in the field. Right. I'm going back to listening to Mozart. Radio 3, BBC Radio 3, are broadcasting from the Royal Opera House, Mozart's opera, La Clemenza di Tito. So there you are. That's it. I'm going to listen to Mozart. Okay. Cheers.